watching a fetus develop reveals much about the ancestral history of that organism. A human embryo in its third week is a featureless disk of cells until a furrow appears and plows its way across the top layer of cells. This is the primitive streak. As the primitive streak then begins to shorten, it leaves a trail in the form of a tube of tissues. This is the notochord, a stiffening rod found in embryos of all chordates. In primitive vertebrates, it persists throughout life as the main axial support of the body. But in higher vertebrates, the spinal cord replaces it. But because our developmental heritage, the spinal cord cannot develop unless the nodal cord secretes the right chemical signals. The genome includes the information necessary for the embryo to develop properly. But the genome has a history. It has been passed down through a chain of ancestors, unbroken since the dawn of life. And it still goes through the motions of creating many of those ancestors. 300 million years ago, our ancestors were creatures who laid their eggs in water. These eggs were small and round and contained yolk sacs to sustain the embryo. This is the first stage of a human embryo. But we notice that our embryo goes through a stage where it takes the form of a flattened disc. We can thank our reptile ancestors for this stage. When reptiles started laying their eggs with new hard shells on land, the embryos had to be supplied with a larger yolk to feed them through a long period of incubation. In order to accommodate this larger yolk, the embryo itself became a flattened disc squeezed between the yolk and the hard shell. The human embryo no longer needs a yolk sac, but even after millions of years, each human embryo is rolled out to form a germinal disc, reptile fashion, before rolling up again. There are many more times in fetal development in which evolutionary history plays a role. Human embryos all have temporary pharyngeal pouches which echo the gill pouches of our ancient fish ancestors. These pouches eventually became the structures that evolved from the gill pouches of fish. Structures that include the eustachian tube, middle ear, tonsils, parathyroid, and thymus. And of course it is not just physical structures themselves, but also the genes which control the development. Many of these genes controlling the development of human embryo are exactly the same genes that control the development of other creatures. In fact, some genes, like the Hawks gene, which regulate the location and shape of limbs and parts, are able to control the development of creatures as different as flies and mammals.